The year is 2017. An unassuming 2D cartoon rises from the depths of development and into the public eye. It's based on one of Disney's most beloved films, A Groundbreaker, their very first foray into 3D Disney princess movies. It's a sign of the time past. Seven years after the premiere of Tangled, we get a continuation in the form of... Okay, so maybe it looked a little silly in the beginning. Hello, and welcome to the channel. My name is Lexicon, and I'm here to explain to you why Tangled the series, which I'm going to refer to as TTS because I value my vocal cords, took over my life for a lot longer than I'd like to admit. Also, if you haven't picked up on it yet, spoiler warning, that's, um, that, that's your warning. Okay, let's get into it. TTS didn't look like much when it first aired. It had this new 2D style, which was actually 3D made to look like 2D. The art is supposed to look like Rapunzel's journal, apparently, and I can definitely see that. It's got all these little painterly details and pretty color schemes. Despite how nice it looked, at least to me, there was a huge concern in the back of mine and many others' minds that it was just a cash grab. It's not like Disney Channel hasn't done something of this nature before. They did that series with Hotel Transylvania, for instance. I hated that. Please don't tell me I was the only one. So, looking at TTS, especially for the first season before I started tuning in, I figured it was going to be a lot like that. Take a franchise that had a lot of love and then turn it into a mind-numbing series for little kids to watch and buy toys for. And don't get me wrong, they did sell toys. But the producers for Tangled the series had a lot more in mind for their precious show. Late into the first season, you meet this boy here, Varian. If you know, you know. But if you don't, this kid right here ends up the main antagonist of Season 1, and our first peek into the Dark Kingdom, aka where the Moonstone is hidden. But how, you ask? Yeah, that was the big question. We had lots of those. I have a lot of problems with this show, which may make a future video, I'm not sure. But Varian here and his writing is far from one of them. It might have something to do with the fact that I was his age at the time he appeared on screen. I actually grew alongside this kid during the course of the show. So this freckled, smart, bright-eyed character with tons of quirk and distinct design choices was my age when they decided to absolutely break his spirit probably kill his father, and leave him alone to fend for himself in a torn up house for months on end. Okay, the situation was a lot grayer than that, but like, still, come on. This is a 14 year old child who's viewed as a troublemaking outsider despite his desire to help, and you're just going to leave him there, alone, without his dad. There are rumors going around the entire kingdom that basically make him out to be this scary, dangerous person because he dabbled in science a little too much for most people, and this is what happens to him? I get that the writers weren't that great at writing rifts between characters in a believable way without making someone look like an idiot, but like... Hmm. Anyway, so, this kid ends up making a bunch of robots, almost commits homicide, basically fights the entire Coronan army by himself, you know, as you do. He goes to prison, season 2 starts. All of this happens in the latter half of season 1. It goes from happy, bright, slice of life to imprisoning a child for attempted murder and or regicide. Can you see why I maybe wanted to know where it went next? So I started tuning in. I started keeping up with the schedule, I got up way too early in the morning to catch the new episodes. This little Disney Channel Junior series had me hooked, and part of that was the growing fandom around it. There are so many good fanfiction writers for TTS. <clears throat> the self-plug. Go to AJ Novels on AO3. <clears throat> and so many people willing to make content like art, theories, comics, and that was just the start. After all this started popping up, we noticed a few key details, one of which was his ties to the Dark Kingdom and the Moonstone, and a theory emerged that would soon garner a lot of attention. Varian's dad, who, by the way, doesn't actually die, he just gets like suspended in crystal has a lot of really interesting quirks about him. Not about his character, I actually find Kieran very flat as a character. But he has ties to the Dark Kingdom where the Moonstone is hidden. We see signs as early as the mid-season of Season 1. This symbol, along with Kieran's old armor, suggested that he was involved with something way beyond our understanding at the time. He reacted strangely to the great black spikes tearing up his village. 
He also shared the symbol on his hand with a mysterious figure we see in the very last moments of the season 1 finale, who wields a sword able to slice these indestructible rocks in half, which, until that point, had been impossible. Even before we knew all of that, people were starting to make guesses as to who would hold the power of the moon in whatever form it would come in. After all, Rapunzel had the power of the sun. It would make a perfect villain for someone to have that of the moon. A lot of people speculated that it would be a moondrop flower, like Rapunzel's sundrop flower. Most people thought it would cause decay and death, and some had even begun to speculate about who would be the one to wield it. Guess who was candidate number one? That's right, ya boy. I was one of that crowd in the early days, and I still do think he would have made so much more sense. He'd already been set up as the central antagonist in season one's finale. He had ties to the Dark Kingdom through his father. He had a good motivation and determination to do what he had to. He posed as a foil to Rapunzel in a lot of ways, from color scheme to the concept of magic versus science and alone versus together. Plus, he had that teal streak in his hair, which was everyone's driving force in believing he would be the one. Of course, no, he didn't end up getting that part. I did like how the rest of the show went, don't get me wrong, but Cassandra did not have me convinced as a villain. I just, I wasn't feeling it. If you haven't put it together by now, that's what I'm drawing over there in the background, varying with the moonstone. See? Doesn't that look awesome? He would have made a great villain. I swear I'm not still sore about it. I swear. <laughs> On the topic of Cassandra, though, I may get flat for this, but that's fine. I'm ready for it. Let's just say what we're all thinking. Cassandra was written very poorly in Season 3. Go ahead and either clap your hands or throw your tomatoes. Whichever way you feel about that statement, uh, keep it to yourself respectfully because this train is rolling on. I'm kidding, by the way. I would love discussion in the comments. If Cass is your favorite, tell me why. There just aren't any promises that I'll change my mind, but I'll listen to your viewpoint. Cassandra started out as a pretty well-written character in early seasons. I liked her. She was deeply flawed, but that's not a bad thing in the context of a story. You need those people. In season two, she felt overshadowed by Rapunzel's importance, and she got her hand severely injured due to a very in-character fight with her. And I felt that. There was good interpersonal conflict between two very close characters not played just for the drama. It would have made really good conflict, honestly. Plus, she had that amazing musical number waiting in the wings. It was feelsy, it made me root for her even though I knew she was kind of just being petty. She had good character back reasons to be feeling that way, but then they just kind of picked and chose when, when to continue that plot line. In some episodes, she was normal old Cass, in some, she was growing distant from Rapunzel, but even in the episodes that suggested there was something more going on here, it was never enough to make me feel like they had something serious going on. When the finale came calling and Cassandra stole the Moonstone for herself, it felt... well, it felt cheap. Especially when so many people were expecting Varian's villain art to continue. Like, come on! <laughs> okay, okay, I'm calm. I will stop harping on it. I promise. Anyway, they played Cassandra to have been Mother Gothel's real daughter, and have abandonment trauma relating to Rapunzel's, um, spur-of-the-moment adoption, which produces a host of problems on its own, but let's talk about what happens after the Moonstone instead. Cassandra is being led by the real big bad of the series, this little blue goblin, in her quest for... I don't know, actually. That was one thing I didn't like about her villain arc. She had all the pizzazz, the looks, the villainess vibes, but she didn't have a driving motivation. If you asked me at any point what Cassandra was trying to do with her powers, I wouldn't have had the slightest clue. It was all just, make my own destiny this and I'm not waiting on you anymore that. I get the motivation for wanting more spotlight, like to take the Moonstone in the first place. But what about after that? She just runs around in the woods doing who knows what. So the Moonstone gets kind of squandered in this way for half a season until the mid-season rolls around. Kind of how mid-seasons work. Here we get the Sundrop and Moonstone clashing, which we find summons the big bad back into the physical realm, yada yada story progression, everyone teams up in the end and all the magic goes back to outer space. So yeah, I skipped over a lot, if you noticed. 
But the point of this video is to, well, honestly, to ramble about TTS because I love it, but also to point out that the Moonstone's eventual holder could have been so much more interesting if only the writers had put a little more thought into it. And maybe if they hadn't had so much Cassandra favoritism. In conclusion, Tangled the Series, or Rapunzel's Tangled Adventure as it was later titled, was a fascinating series to keep up with. It did something not a whole lot of Disney Channel shows were doing at the time, and it did what it set out to do, no more no less. I will forever love it no matter how old the show or I get, or how much I rag on it, because let's be honest here, whenever I love something, I tear it apart. Is that a bad sign? Is that a red flag? Maybe. However, I still believe that the trajectory of the main antagonist could have been a lot better thought out. I think there were a lot of story elements that were tied up in an unsatisfactory way, and that there was a perfect candidate who got pushed aside for someone with no prior stakes in this plot. Cassandra's arc felt shoehorned, for lack of a better word, and that was only magnified by the fact that Varian was right there and already in the villain's chair the whole time. I'm really sorry I went back to it, didn't I? Still, I'll wrap this up on a high note and say we got some really cool character designs and songs out of all of it. Tangled will always have a place in mine and a lot of others' hearts, and no matter its flaws, there will be someone out there who really enjoyed the way it went. Are you one of those people? Did Cassandra's arc speak to you in a way that completely went over my head? Please do share your thoughts. As sassy as I've been this entire video, I do appreciate feedback, even if it goes against my opinions. Civil, polite conversation is healthy and fun. If you enjoyed yourself here today, please consider liking and subscribing, and have a great day.